Hi! Hi. I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're Enchantarium. In this video, we'll be making James, or Kojiro, from the Pokemon's Team Rocket. A lot of you asked us to do Team Rocket in the comments under our Meowth video, so here it is. We have much more female dolls than boys to choose from, and the only good choice in our stash was Dexter Charming. He's one of my favorite boy dolls to repaint, and one of my favorite characters from the Ever After High series. I started preparing this doll in April 2020, and at that time we only had one second-hand Dexter that didn't have a foot. Here you can see me considering switching his body for Jackson Jekyll doll with a slimmer body. The original James is designed to be a bit feminine looking and the slimmer body would suit him better, but this is our version and instead of making an androgynous James, I want to make a gender fluid James, with both male and female features without blending them too much. We definitely enjoy redesigning characters rather than following original designs. I like analyzing characters, their personalities, behaviors, looks, then taking the essence of it, letting it run through my brain and pop it out on a concept sketch. I'm quickly preparing the head, making place for the new hair and face. So we have our handsome man Dexter ready for customizing, laying around since April 2020, and in the meanwhile I was able to find another second-hand Dexter with both feet. We're going to use this new one with a prepared head, and the footless body will wait for another project. I need the skin on his arms to be in perfect condition, so I'm getting rid of the factory marks and seams on his shoulders. My version of James will be a bit different from what we're used to. In the anime Pokemon, James is one of the main villains, but he's the most kind, lighthearted, and the least serious of the trio. He was raised in a very wealthy family, but he didn't like the strict rules of the upper class society. He's a rebel who values his freedom, and he gave up his fortune to live a life full of adventures. He's emotional and shares a close bond with his Pokémon. He enjoys cross-dressing and dressing in general, which might mean he likes to express himself by his appearance. In the show it is shown a couple of times that he likes to collect stuff, like rare bottle caps or pretty Pokéballs, and I believe he has collecting tendencies in general. So we have a rebellious, emotional, expressive collector who loves adventures and his Pokémon friends, and what would be a better way to portray all these features than Pokémon tattoos? My experience with tattoos is that if you get one, you want another and another and I think it's a type of collecting. Also, I really want to do more tattoos on dolls. So yeah, we have a Tattoo James. To make the tattoos I'm using watercolor pencils and I work in layers. First, I wanted to make just his lower arms covered with peonies, mandalas and Pokémon in black and white. But he looks like a color-loving person to me, so I added purple and blue tones to both the black and negative space parts. It looked kind of empty on the rest of the arms, so I decided to give him something bigger there. I looked up the most badass Pokemon James owned and picked Gyarados, and to contrast it on the other arm, I drew the cutest Pokemon James had, Chimeko. And that's the look! We have Chimeko, Coughing, Marini, Gyarados, Moltres, because we can't forget that James is a flaming Moltres, Victory Bell, and a small Carnivine. I wish I did a Growlithe tattoo, as this is James's favorite childhood Pokémon, but collecting tattoos is a journey and he might have a plan for a Growlithe tattoo in the future. I don't have many boys' clothes patterns, and they also differ between Monster and Ever After Highlines, so I'll have to start by copying one from the clothes that our dolls came with. I ripped all the seams on this sleeveless shirt. Does anyone know if I can somehow sharpen my seam ripper? It's become quite blunt, and I'm wondering if I need to toss the whole thing and get a new one. I traced the pattern onto a piece of paper, and then proceeded to throw the original one out in the mess of trying to get my degree earlier this month. Thankfully, I scanned the original, so here's a copy of that. It was pretty faint, so I redrew the lines so you, and I, can see them. If you're wondering, yes, I graduated and defended my thesis, and I received the highest grade possible, which is a 6. Yay! Woo! Gummy! Yes! Just as for the first character in the Team Rocket series, I will be using my Cricut to make a vinyl decoration on James's shirt. Alex made the design, and I just pressed the buttons on the machine. We can now weed out the vinyl pieces that are not needed. I think the blade in my Cricut is getting a bit dull, because some of the smaller details didn't come out as cleanly as I would hope, particularly the roses, which I had to kind of put back together on the sticky backing. The majority of the shirt will be colored white, so I'm using a white cotton. 
Before I press any designs on it, I iron the fabric flat. Then I stack up the different layers to make this nice composition. I had some trouble with the foil leaving a texture on the vinyl and some glue getting stuck on the black part. If you know how to avoid that, please let me know in the comments. To remedy the uneven texture, I pressed the whole design with a piece of cotton to even things out. With the design in place, I can cut out the pattern pieces. Putting this together is pretty easy. I sewn the shoulder seams and proceeded to hem the armholes. I did that by hand. I know that I said that I hate hand sewing, and I still do, but in the case of very curved hems, I know I can do a better job with a needle and thread. I hemmed the neckline by hand as well. When that's done, we can close the side seams back on the machine, baby! With the sides closed, I hemmed the bottom and since it was a straight edge, I did that by machine as well. I fitted the shirt on a doll to check how much seam allowance I had in the back, so I know where to add velcro. I didn't have a long enough strip to span the whole thing, so I split what I had into two pieces, and this is how it looks. Porous pants, I'm doing a two-toned look. White in the front to match the uniforms from the anime and light denim in the back just for fun. First I put the fronts and backs together and stitched the seam allowance towards the blue side. I also added fake pocket seam details. Then I sewn the front rise together so I can finish the waist with a hem. At this stage I also hemmed the bottoms of the pants. Next I sewed the back seam. I was comfortable sewing without pinning up until this point but to make sure the seams and hems match up, I used pins. To guarantee a nice fit, I trimmed the corners of the seam allowance so they don't poke out the bottom, and I snipped the seam allowance at the most curved part in the crotch. The last thing to do is trim the pants over and add a closure. I again used Velcro for this. Let's see how they fit! Now, let me tell you about this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. It is curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes, so we can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. I told you that I recently got a master's degree in science, but now I'm planning to go into a PhD program. It's going to be pretty intensive, so I decided to watch a course about productivity by Thomas Frank to see how I can maximize my time and resources to plan a good strategy to keep up with both research and dolls in the coming years. I learned that I was already doing a lot of things right, and I got some great tips on how to manage my time better too. So if you want to join Skillshare's creative community, the first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so we can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you, Skillshare! Let's put the head back on the body and take care of his face. After protecting the body with a piece of cloth and spraying the head with two coats of Mr. Super Clear, I can start sketching the basic features. I start with watercolor pencils using very light colors, so the sketch can be easily removed when I make a mistake. Our Meowth doll is looking to the left, and I want James to look to the right side. I think it will create a nice dynamic in the future group pictures if Jessie is drawn to look straight, just like I did with our Trix dolls, where every witch is looking in a different direction, but with good posing, they somehow look right into your soul. I'm slowly building layers of watercolor pencils and pastels to have darker and more vibrant colors. I'm drawing short bottom lashes with dark blue pencil and adding top lashes that are facing down for a sassy look. I want him to look like in the Team Rocket intro sequences, confident and a bit mischievous, but very soft and flirty at the same time. I'm adding details like waterline, catch lights and eyebrow hairs with watered down white acrylic paint. As a last step, I'm giving him two coats of Sparkly Perlex powder in gold and white for a soft shine. We have a peachy pink blushing on his face, so we need to add the same colors to his body. I'm adding it mostly to his neck and arms as the rest will be covered with a t-shirt and pants. To make the elbow joints less visible, I'm painting them with a black permanent marker. I add a bit of detail like wrinkles and nails to the hands. His legs are a bit too loose and to make them sturdier, I tied a rubber band around his knee as he's going to have pants that will cover the bulk. 
I picked this technique up from Valkyrie's World and her male Coraline video. Because of the tattoos, the body has a lot of layers of matte sealant, so to bring back a healthy shine, I'm applying one layer of Perlex powder. It's time for the hair. I'm painting the scalp with blue acrylic paint, so the skin won't peek through the hair. I'll be using a strong white glue, and these blue slash purple yarn wefts I prepared back in April 2020. I remember James having periwinkle blue hair, but somewhere in the series his hair turned to lavender. I personally like him better in blue, and we already had this yarn in our stash, so I'm going to use it without any alterations. For me this yarn is 100% blue, but Barb says for her it's purple. <laughs> Which color do you think it is? To do the part, I'm gluing a weft in the opposite direction, and when it's dry, I flip it. The heat will make it stay in place. Parts are still my weak point, as we use nylon hair more often than yarn, but I think it turned out okay. I like him with long hair, but he looks too edgy that way. I'm trimming the hair with thinning scissors, trying not to cut too short. Then I take my regular scissors and cut all the individual strands that are left after the first round. I think he will look cute with a rose at the side. I attached a pin to this paper flower and pushed it into his head. His bestie coughing approves this look. Off camera, I decided that he might look even cuter with his hair tight at the back, and I think I was right. A while ago, when we were visiting our grandma, we found our old dolls that we had given up to our cousins when we were quote unquote grown out of Barbies. You're right. Amongst the dolls was this gorgeous ball gown that I got for some Christmas. Alex had another one in a different color, but we couldn't find it. Anyway, since James disguises himself as a woman in the anime often, we thought it would be funny to take a couple of pictures of him in a dress, so I decided to fix up this one. There's some loose strings and the neckline is busted, so I thought I would sew a ribbon over that. But the ribbon was not cooperating and I wasn't about to spend half an hour hand sewing it, so I just used a bit of everybody's favorite, hot glue instead. That made it go much quicker. In the front, I ripped out the nasty old flowers and I added a ribbon, which I burned to prevent fraying. I also added a belt out of this nice golden cord. Looks good as new. I'm going to repaint these Dexter trainers and I'm painting them with white acrylic paint. Three layers were enough to cover the dark blue base. I'm adding baby blue shoelaces and silver eyelets. They have a nice big white canvas on the sides and it would be a waste of potential not to paint anything there. James is often depicted with a red or blue rose, so I think he would enjoy a floral design on his sneakers. I'm painting the roses with light blue acrylic paint, leaving a white space between the petals. Some leaves and twigs and dots and the painting is finished. I enjoyed it so much that I painted it on every side of the shoes. The vinyl print on the top needs a bit of fixing in some places and I like to paint more details. I'm painting the cracks with black watercolor paint and also changing the bottom stitch to black. Then I'm making the leaves lighter and adding a lot of shadows and highlights to the roses. Recently, heat transfer vinyl applications are our favorite way to decorate the clothing, but sometimes they need a touch of paint to look just like we planned. To spice up the overall look, I'm adding a bracelet from this chunky chain. We were considering a necklace, but decided that maybe a chain on the pants would be a better choice. Sewing is not really my domain, and you can see me struggle to do it, but it's such a simple task that I managed. And with the chains in their place, the doll is finished. This is how James turned out. It was a pretty relaxed project for us, a breath of fresh air between some more difficult and demanding projects like Lily and a thesis defense. To finish up this series, we will be making Jesse soon, and that video will be coming out in August. What do you think about giving the existing characters such a different look? Do you like it or do you prefer a more conservative approach? Let us know your opinion down below!
Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. Bye! To remedy, remedy me, me. So to bring back. <laughs> <laughs> and that video. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, video.